Hi everyone. So in this particular video, we will be talking about a few more questions which has been asked in the DevOps interview uh, in the TCS and uh, other companies. And these are the similar questions which will, you will be facing in uh, your DevOps interview while you're pairing as a entry-level DevOps engineer or the uh, experienced one, the DevOps engineer. So in terms of the Docker, we already have covered these questions, uh, which are the part of the Docker and uh, these are the interview questions only. Now we will be talking about the questions which had been asked in the TCS and uh, uh, if you appear now as well, you will be getting the similar kind of questions in your interview. So the first question comes, comes as, uh, what's the default network in the uh, Docker, correct? So as we have uh, talked earlier as well, so in the Docker, there are uh, multiple uh, networking types. So the default one goes with the bridge network. So you can prepare uh, based on that and you can answer. So what the default network? That's the uh, bridge one. Then your uh, second question comes as, can we delete the image while container is running out of uh, that image? So uh, in general, you cannot delete the image. Uh, if uh, you cannot delete the image, if container is running out of that image, but yeah, if you want to do it forcefully, you can do that as well. So it also depends the all the questions which are mentioned here, all depends on the interviewer as well. So you might face uh, different kind of questions, but yeah, if you uh, prepare for all these questions, you will be getting the similar uh, answer, similar questions during your interview for any of the organizations. Then your uh, third question comes as, what's the difference between K8 and Docker in terms of their uses and their if any, correct? So you can uh, tell them the differentiation between them. Docker is used for your containerization. Like uh, if you have the source code, it, you will be writing a Docker file and the different steps that will create an image out of that. And now when you have to deploy that particular image to run your container, to run your application, you will be running it over the kit and uh, kit will be like deploying it in terms of ports or the different kind of replica sheet or the jobs, whatever you want to run deployment demonstrate. So there you can deploy on the kit side. Then your next questions comes in. What is the difference between VM virtualization and Docker virtualization? Like the, to tell the difference between these two, you can see that uh, container uses guest OS that and uh, while VM uses complete OS. That means whatever the operating system is associated with the virtual machine, that will be completely used while the container itself does not have the its uh, operating system. It uh, uses the operating system which is associated with the machine which is on which this container is particularly running. So the container is, in, uh, is lightweight also. Right? So if we or if you see the earlier questions, so we do have the question why container is called lightweight. So the one of the answer of that will be the container uses guest OS. That's why it's lightweight as well. And it has the limited files. Only 5% of the files associated uh, are associated with the container. So it's the lightweight as well. Then your next question comes is how to create a user and group to run Docker file rather than running it from the root user. So generally, if you don't create any user and specify user, your all the execution happens with the help of root user. But if you want to run uh, through a particular user for considering the security and other steps, uh, limited permissions kind of thing, you can create the group and uh, you can add that particular user to a group. So you can run command run group add run is basically used uh, run is the particular uh, command to execute your commands. So you can run group add and then hyphen r uh, group name xsmf group or the abc hyphen group any of the group name if you want to mention and then user add to add your user in a group so if you have created this uh, user xsmf user then you can add this particular uh, xsmf user into group xsmf group correct then uh, talking about the uh, similar questions in the terms of you know, in perspective of the tcs for uh, AWS, these are the questions. What is the usage of the CloudWatch alarms, CloudWatch events? Tell us the difference between these two. So you can tell the difference as well. Then the next question becomes what issue can arise if uh, two of VPC overlapping, uh, VPC have overlapping CIDR blocks and how to resolve this? Like if the both of them have the overlapping CIDR, the communication, the, if you want to establish the communication between these two, that will not be possible. So you will have to either add additional CIDR to uh, one of the VPC or you will have to resolve the CIDR conflict. Like you can uh, 
give you the non uh, non conflicting cri at to both of these then the next question will become what is the difference between ec2 and s3 ec2 is used for computing uh, services like computing a purpose and s3 is used for the storage one correct so you can tell uh, in the detail as well if you have gone through the answers or if you have not gone through the answers you can watch out the videos on ec2 and s3 on my channel as well and you will get uh, the detailed discussion on this next question comes up can i attach same ec2 instance into multiple target groups yes you can do you can create the same ec2 you can uh, attach the same uh, server to multiple target groups next questions comes up what are the different types of the ec2 so the answer is memory optimized compute optimized general purpose and accelerated one there are multiples as well correct uh, six to seven uh, instance types so you can uh, uh, read, read about that and you can answer in detail then your uh, different storage classes available in s3 so it's a kind of uh, s3 intelligent tiring s3 standard s3 standard infrequent access s3 outpost s3 glacier deep archive there are multiple uh, six to seven storage class available in your s3 so that you can tell then your next questions related to uh, tcs only if you get into the cicd section so these are the questions what kind of jenkins pipeline you used to write declarative or the scripted pipeline so gently we go with the declarative one so you can tell about that or if you have gone, if you have gone through the scripted one you can tell about that as well then next question comes as i have to write jenkins file stages in a way that if one stage fails pipeline does not stop and it proceed with the next step till the end so there is a concept of catch error block in the jenkins pipeline in the jenkins that you can write and uh, this particular catch error block will fulfill the purpose that uh, any of the stages fail it, it it will not fail the pipeline but it will just run that, that till the end and it will uh, give you the error particularly that the particularly that error then your question comes as how will you set up notification things so in the pipeline it it fails it will notify to user so there's a a uh, concept of adding notifications as well that you can learn about that in the Jenkins documentation and you can implement and answer based on that. Next question is what is the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment? Continuous deployment uh, becomes like whatever you uh, do the changes and you directly deploy it over the uh, <clears throat> you deploy it over the uh, your instance or the environment that becomes your continuous deployment where continuous de delivery becomes whatever the changes has been pushed that will be uh, it added to the uh, source code management you can read in the detail about this as well and you can answer based on that next questions comes as what is the blue sn on the jenkins you can read about that it, it gives you the ui kind of uh, things in the jenkins from where you can run run your pipelines and all the related configurations then next questions become what is multi-build in the Jenkins? You can read about this as well and you can answer based on that. Then there is a question. Can we add external EC2 machine in already running Jenkins? Yes, we can add uh, external EC2 machine as well. You can configure based on the host IP and uh, SSH key and it can connect to the that external EC2 machine and that will work as a slave. Next question. How we can migrate running Jenkins from one EC2 machine to another one which is recently launched. So you can use this config.xml file as well and you can create uh, the volume you can attach to the next server whatever the configuration you have and you can click copy the all the contents on the newly launched machines and that way you can migrate your pipelines and other things on that uh, new server so that's it uh, in this particular video we'll be talking about few more uh, devops and uh, other technology related questions and uh, we will come in the next video so till the time thank you bye bye